All right, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we will be working a, an example problem involving Bernoulli's equation, fluid statics, and conservation of mass. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so we have a uh, reservoir uh, with a free surface exposed to atmosphere. And installed above that reservoir, taking a suction off the reservoir, is an eductor. And one dimension that will be important is that the uh, the height from the surface of the water to the center line of the eductor is denoted as H. And well, let's, before we jump into this, uh, let's uh, review a little bit about how an eductor works. So we have water pumped into the uh, inlet section, and it is uh, there is a nozzle which uh, chokes down the diameter. And by Bernoulli's principle, the uh, pressure will be dropping, and the pressure will be dropped enough to uh, suck water up into the suction tube into the eductor and then the original water plus whatever water is entrained through the suction tube will exit uh, out the outlet piping and this example uh, is going to atmosphere so it is a free jet now in this example uh, we're only uh, solving for the velocity inside the throat that is just enough to aspirate water up into the suction tube into the throat and so this the suction tube will be in a static condition. It will not be flowing. And that will be important on, have an important bearing on how we uh, solve the problem. All right, so let's get into it. Again, the uh, surface of the water is atmospheric. And since the suction tube is in a static, no flowing condition, uh, just like in a manometer problem, if I can trace a path uh, in the same liquid at the same level for a static condition, then it's also at the same pressure and so uh, the pressure inside the tube at the uh, water surface level uh, is also an atmospheric and let's go ahead and select that as point alpha inside the tube at the water surface level for point bravo let's pick the center line of our throat eductor throat and for point charlie let's select the outlet uh, which is a freeze trip keep in mind that alpha is at atmospheric and charlie is at atmospheric we don't know the pressure problem all right, well, let's uh, look at a summary table of what we do know. And so this uh, tells us uh, for the three points, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, pressure, velocity, and elevation. So we've got quite a few unknowns here. And let's keep in mind what we're really looking for is the uh, velocity at Bravo, which is just enough to suck water up into the suction tube, creating a static column of water uh, in the suction tube. All right, well. Fluid statics tells us that the uh, pressure at alpha, which again is inside the tube, is equal to the pressure at bravo, which is the throat, plus the height, the pressure due to the height of the water, rho gh. Well, we already know also that uh, pressure at alpha is atmospheric, so uh, we can solve these equations for the pressure at bravo, and it's equal to the atmospheric pressure minus uh, rho gh. Uh, and that makes sense. Uh, pressure at Bravo is going to be less than atmospheric. That's how it's able to suck water up into the uh, throat. So let's keep track of that and update our table. All right. Well, we have two unknown velocities, so and we want to uh, relate the velocity at Bravo to Charlie. And the tool we're going to be using is conservation of mass. And this is pretty straightforward, so I'm going to skip the details. But the mass flow rate at Bravo is equal to the mass flow rate at Charlie. And, but that is straightforward, but keep in mind, this is only true since there is no actual flow up through the suction tube. If that was the case, this equation is not enough. We would have to add on the, on the left-hand side, the mass flow rate at alpha plus the mass flow rate at bravo is equal to the mass flow rate at charlie. But that's not our situation. Again, we have a static column of water in the suction tube. So I can solve this equation for charlie and I chose to do it in terms of the uh, diameter squ ratio squared. And let's update our summary table. Now we have one unknown. Right now we have no equations to solve that, uh, but we can use Bernoulli's equation. Well, when you use Bernoulli's equation, clearly you want to bring in the unknown. So we want to go from point to point, uh, one of the points being Bravo. And since we know all the information on alpha, it's very tempting to go alpha to Bravo. However, that would be incorrect. Uh, to see why that is incorrect, let's review the restrictions of Bernoulli's equation. Steady state, that's not a problem. Inviscid, it's not a problem. Uh, our answer will be based upon ignoring uh, all frictional losses. 
incompressible, that's not a problem, and applied along a streamline. Therein, that is why uh, alpha is not a valid point for the application of Bernoulli's equation because the suction tube is a static column of water and there is no streamline from alpha to Bravo. And keep in mind, our equation for the velocity at Charlie derived from conservation of mass is totally based upon there being no flow of this suction tube. So we really only have one option and that is to apply Bernoulli's equation from Bravo to Charlie. All right, so uh, this is the equa Bernoulli's equation applied from Bravo to Charlie, and let's work on that. And, well, we know quite a bit about that. We know the uh, elevation at Bravo is at H. Uh, we know the elevation at Charlie is at H. And uh, we're going to substitute through this, but we should also know that the uh, pressure at Charlie is at atmospheric pressure, so we'll be using that. And pressure at Bravo, well, we have an equation for that. So we'll be substituting that in. And we have an equation for the velocity at Charlie. So we'll be squaring that and substituting that in. And when we do that, we are left with this equation. Again, on the left-hand side, the first two terms, that is the pressure at Bravo. Uh, in the parentheses, this is the velocity of Charlie squared. And uh, we substituted in H as appropriate in atmospheric pressure for Charlie. So there's many ways to simplify this. And so here we have one equation, one unknown, and uh, that's good. And also good is that the uh, one unknown is what we're looking for, which is the uh, throat velocity. So there's that equation. I'm going to skip most of the algebra, uh, show one or two of the steps. And so uh, there's one step. And solving that for the velocity at Bravo, uh, we get the square root of the uh, ratio of 2GH over the quantity 1 minus... Uh, the ratio of the diameters to the fourth power. Uh, this is our final answer, but let's do a quick dimensional check. Uh, the denominator inside the radical is clearly a dimensionless. In the numerator, we have the acceleration of gravity, which has dimensions of length per time squared, and then height, which is length. So the product of that is length squared per time squared, square root. So yeah, we, we return length per time, which is the dimension of velocity, what we were looking for. So that is our final answer, and uh, that wraps up this problem. I hope you found it useful. Uh, so uh, please like and subscribe, and have a great day.